Now we get to pivot into our favorite topic, which is the U.S. and what is happening with the U.S. in terms of flows, demand. So we had an increase in demand, and it's important to look at, you know, typically this is when that demand pivot starts to happen, and it's being driven by gasoline. And gasoline is normally a big, a nice big increase this point in time because of the shifts that we get for February break, President's Day weekend, that's usually a, bit, a fairly sizable vacation period, both for anybody that was crazy enough to go to Disney World right now, or Orlando, or to a ski resort. This is a very, you know, this is kind of that last peak, and then you start to see that drop off. And and again, that's, that's what normally happens. It just happened, you know, it's all about a, a matter of period in terms of when, but even even with that gasoline bump, you can still see we're well below normal, and that's driven by distillate. That's driven by kerosene, jet fuel. And, and the distillate side was the saving grace in other periods. And as we've been talking about with, tr- with trade and trucking and travel, it's just not happening in the same way. And that is the much bigger problem that you have, which is why we think we're going to continue to, to move higher. Like we're going to continue to see demand go up along seasonal lines just at a reduced rate. And that's what we've been trying to highlight that we will see increases along seasonal lines. That is not abnormal. It's just going to be you know, 500,000 to 700,000 barrels below normal. And a lot of that is going to be driven based on a little bit of reduced gasoline demand, a lot of reduced diesel demand, and then just that kind of waffling back and forth on jet fuel, because even though TSA passengers are back to normal, the flights are not. And that's one of those distinctions we've been making. And for anybody who has had the unfortunate uh, opportunity to to fly, those planes are jam packed and it's all about maximizing revenue, reducing flights, maximizing how many people are sitting in those seats. And that's what we're going to continue to see. Now on the distillate side, when we look at what is happening on the distillate storage, you can see that distillate storage increased uh, 2.7 million barrels uh, against the five-year average. That's still 17.2 million below the five-year, but you can see that we're getting counter-seasonal builds. It's well above the uh, last year, and and a lot of this is driven based on imports. Imports were up, excuse me, 192,000 barrels a day. That's which is above the five-year average, and there there is some of that. Uh, Russian product just floating around, and we're going to cover that deeper in segment three. But here you can see is we we will continue to see those counter seasonal builds. The weather isn't isn't going to pull any more heating oil out. You know we we're not going to see trucking pick up anymore. <clears throat> So we do expect to see some of those increases, especially when you look at production. Production of uh, diesel still remains elevated. It increased 1.3% in terms of yield, up to um, just over 31% of the cut was uh, distillate. And again, round numbers, because we're, we're, we're not going to get complicated in terms of how you break it up. But here's where you know, we expect to see some of these counter-seasonal builds coming through. And then they'll probably level off something closer to that 29-year average. Now, when we look at uh, at crack spreads, here you can see crack spreads have come down again. And this is going to be an underlying problem because if you remember, it's gasoline cracks haven't been great. It's really been bit driven by diesel. And now we're back to some of these lows. And it's still elevated when you go back through 2018. It's still elevated versus there, but you're losing some of that momentum as you're getting storage built up, as you're starting to see some of those. those and so the impetus to continue to maintain this production is still there but weakening. And and that's going to be the pivot point because as it falls back, if it goes back to 30 or just below, that's when we, we expect to see a much bigger issue in terms of some of those flows. Now, pad one, uh, distillate in- inventories, you can see have normalized a bit, but still on the low end. And, and it we will get one more cycle of cold uh, in further north and further in the northwest and the Midwest, when you look at, you know, this massive uh, w- uh, winter storm coming through, a lot of cold, and then as that passes, that 
technically should be the last kind of hurrah. But uh, again, we so far we've seen things be fairly slow in terms of just weather and uh, and it's been a fairly warm winter, which again has put more into pad one storage. Then you look at pad three, it's all about a balancing act, how much can be exported, how much can be put onto the colonial pipeline, and that back and forth. Now with additional competition from discounted Russian product, you'll probably see a little bit less exports trying to maximize what's on colonial. And we do expect to see these um, pad three builds accelerate a bit. But just to be clear, they normally accelerate this uh, as we get towards the uh, beginning, middle of March. The question is always going to be, what is the rate of change and how is that being driven? And given the competition from Russian product, we think it should be at a fairly healthy clip when you look at pad three. Now, uh, the demand for uh, for <laughs> this lid, very low. As we've been saying, it's going to stay well below the five-year average. We don't think it's going to make new record lows or seasonally adjusted lows, again, going back to 2018, but just really bump along the bottom. You know, maybe you could fall out of the cloud, but it's just realistically, we're going to stay at a very depressed level. And that's with just looking at trucking. You know, trucking has flatlined. You know, we don't see this huge pivot. Like the pivot isn't there. It's fairly flat. And and again, that's going to be a problem over the longer term because you have a lot of trucking still out there. You've hired a lot of different people. And the margins continue to get compressed, which is going to cause some different uh, adjustments in the market in general. Rail traffic, car loads are still down 3.9% versus 22. Uh, Coal is down. uh, Chems is down. Chems is going to stay down. You know, grain and forest products is down, but that's also timing in terms of some of the moves. You know, that will come back. Motor vehicle parts uh, is elevated. Petroleum, petroleum products is is elevated. Petroleum, petroleum products will likely start to uh, mitigate a bit. It'll still stay above 22, but you'll start to see that come down. And then intermodal, now while it bounced from last week, it's still 8.8% below last year. Year to date, it's still 7.8% below. We think that's going to continue. And just because not only is 22 tougher comps, But again, back to just lack of activity and lack of trade, higher inventories, some of that slowdown that we've been talking about on the economic side, especially in the manufacturing front, that's going to uh, put some pressure there, which is going to remain. And when you look at just the uh, what's coming into the U.S., uh, change from previous year. All of these numbers are down thirty uh, percent or more versus the previous year. We don't see that changing. You know, if anything, it's actually below twenty nineteen levels on the trucking side and on the shipping side, which just as we've been saying is showing us some of these pressure points, which is going to remain and why we we don't see any real near-term bullishness. I think a lot of the bearishness is baked in, but there's not there's really nothing to push us higher on the diesel front, obviously, unless we get some massive polar vortex. But when you look at the uh, temperature outlook, <laughs> there there isn't one. We do have, again, that cold that's going to sweep down and it's coming down from Washington all the way across. You know, depending on how it hits, it could cover into Jersey. Right now, it's expected to be, uh, you know, from essentially just below Boston North. And that's going to, but when you look at the underlying data, this is not a bullish backdrop for natural gas. It's not a bullish backdrop for heating oil. So again, this this is why we, we think that is, you know, you're going to have some of those headwinds continue on the distillate side. Turning to gasoline, a uh, drop of 1.86 million uh, that was driven by pad three, pad five, uh, finished motor gasoline. Uh, but when you look at blending components, but blending opponents were only down 640,000 barrels. So again, there was a bit of an overshoot to the downside on, on storage up and down. As we said last week, you know, even though gasoline storage was higher, uh, was up, you know, blending opponents also had a build, but not to the same level. Now, the other way, gasoline had a bigger draw, but then the blending opponents, which again, you have to kind of not normalize. And this is usually when we start to see a drop. And you can see that it depends on the year. Sometimes it goes flat, slightly up. So we should get one or two more weeks of builds. 
and then you'll start to see uh, that accelerating to the down, uh, a bit of an acceleration to the downside. But what we're saying is that the comps are going to get easier because we don't see the same level of draws. We will get some draws. We, we think we get one or two more builds and then the draws start. Uh, start. It's the rate of change is going to be very shallow because we don't have a huge amount of internal demand or at least the same level of internal demand as previous years. Exports will kind of balance out a bit just because of some of the shifts in the global market. And we've already seen a fairly sizable drop in refining activity. We're not going to see another one. So we're starting to get to this level of comfort, which, and and unfortunately, there's not a huge amount of demand as imports will remain, you know, right around the five-year average, keeping us essentially one or two more builds, and then we'll start to go sideways. And we'll likely meet, if you look at that March 15th number where everyone kind of converges, that's where we see us meeting, and then we will be closer to the average and maybe even above the five-year average as we get closer. Now, the imports were down 114,000 barrels a day, pad one driving that, but even with that decline, it's still 20,000 over the five year. There's still a significant amount of product in in, uh, Europe. We do see a little bit of a slowdown, and a lot of that is driven just based on Arab economics, how much is shipping, and the shipping side is still promoting more diesel, less um, gasoline. Blending components is the one that we were talking about. So here you can see it leveling off. Uh, the pet, the lack of pet chem demand obviously is going to put more on the blending side. And this is when you'll start to see some of that, well, how much winter grade do we have? Winter grade gasoline do we have? How much summer grade gasoline do we have? And where does that pivot start? And that's when you start, because uh, for those that don't know, winter grade has benzene in it. Summer grade does not. Uh, and that's just or in different levels. And so that's going to adjust. And in order to make summer grade, it's more expensive because benzene is cheaper. So to replace it, you have to, you have to, again, it's more expensive aromatics. So inherently you get a, a price increase for gasoline. And that's just based on compos- uh, composition of the uh, gasoline in the tank. So here you can see that according to Gas Buddy, U.S. gasoline demand rose 0.1 from the prior week. So this is when it's going to be important to look at some of the different shifts because as we were saying, this week happening right now is going to be very strong. So this uh, here you can see that Gas Buddy is at about 8.45. You know, what we're saying is we're going to get a nice bump for this week, and then it's going to come back down to, the as we've been saying, 8.4, 8.5, and then we'll start to creep higher as we progress through this uh, the um, uh, March, but we have inclement weather that's going to impact demand. We also have the... Um, Uh, which is going to offset some of the travel. But again, the inclement weather and the travel pulled forward, which is why the EIA number was so much higher and it'll drop back down, I think actually fairly close to where Gas Buddy is right now. Now, this is interesting because heading into, you know, North America, you can see is fairly flat. That's going to, well, we will get a bit of a bump here. Not obviously, as we've been saying, it'll be below that 2019 year average, but look at Asia, look at Europe continuing to roll over. Now, Asia is going to get a little bit of a bump just for uh, uh, from uh, some of that Ramadan, but then it's going to level off. And, and we just don't see us going back above that 2019 level anywhere in the world at this point outside of China, which we're going to talk about in the next segment. So that's, again, leaving a lot of gasoline in storage, leaving a lot of light distillate in storage. And that's that overhang, which is why when you look at the different crack spreads of light distillate, middle distillate, middle distillate is the one that you have to look at the most. And that's where we have the biggest problem. Now, when you look at uh, gasoline prices, they've come down, but normalized. And, and that's and a lot of that normalization is because February break, you know, typically you had some of that increased demand as we get to the other side. And then that lull between spring break and some of the others, depending on where we are, that's when you'll you'll start to see some of those prices come uh, come down a bit further. And then diesel, as winter comes to an end, trucking isn't there. We continue to see some of this normalization on the diesel side. But you can see, obviously, we're starting from a much higher point. 
Now, when we look at gasoline demand, you can see that nice little spike. You know, it, it's all depends on when that spike happens. We see it normalizing, but again, not coming back down to the lows, just coming halfway because we spoke, we spiked to 8.9, likely come down, down to about 8.4, 8.5. And then we'll start to see a bit of that gradual movement up and really start to peak out something closer to 8.8, 8.9 as we go into that March period. So then when you look at propane, propylene, another draw of 2.96. Uh, but again, we're still rate of change right in line at the very high end. A lot of that is being driven based on obviously internal, uh, you know, <laughs> not as cold here. And, and, uh, and, and then uh, pet chem demand just isn't the same but exports remain strong. Uh, Jet had a build of 760,000. We had a, a sizable drop in, in jet fuel demand. We continue to say the average is going to be that 1.45, 1.55. And again, the averaging out. So have a swing to the downside, have a swing to the upside, still remaining in the same place. And now when you look at TSA passengers, there was a weekly decline in the US, but we're still above 2019 levels as the Euro area flatlines. But as you can see, there is less activity in Europe, and that's something that's going to remain the case. The bigger issue, as we've talked about, when you look at TSA passengers, is even though the passengers are, are now averaging in a comfortable, in a better position, we don't have the flights. And that, again, is leading to, even though we have a normalized in passengers, not in flights, which is still keeping jet fuel demand low to a uh, percentage. Now, when we start looking at open table, here you can see that there's been some activity uh, increases uh, in the U.S., about 2%, 1% globally, about 10% better. You know, there's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this progresses just because there's uh, the cost of, <laughs> of food abroad uh, at, uh, out is, is increasing again. And, and we do see some downside. It's just when do people yield? Again, that's trying to figure out the consumer. Some people, as we look at February break, again, we had President's Day weekend. President's Day weekend, people go away, people go out to eat. February break, people go out. So that's going to support some of the U.S. We do see some downside in some negative numbers, but again, not like negative 10, negative 15. It's just something down 5, 8%. But again, the, as prices remain elevated for eating out, we think that's going to put more pressure as well. So that's what we have for you on the U.S. side. As we go further uh, in the next segment, we're going, to go, we're going to look more at Russia, Russian flows, and then what's happening on the global footprint, especially on the refined product side.